folks, welcome to my dark and dreary garage. It is a dark, dreary, rainy spring day here in Virginia. So, and it's perfect timing, because I had a little project I've been kind of putting off a little bit. Well, not really putting off, just hasn't had the time to do it. So, today, today this weekend, really, you know, is a perfect opportunity with weather and everything. I can't get anything else done. So, I am, uh, I'm going to do this project. What project is that, you may ask? Well, I'm going to make what we affectionately call dog slop. Um, what, that, and what that is, is that, so my family, we feed our dogs a lot of, um, you know, leftover, leftover meat product. So what we do is we give them one scoop of dry food, which is some really good stuff that, you know, we've been using for years, high quality dog food. And then we supplement that with you know, uh, uh, roughly a pint of watered down um, chicken soup, chicken, turkey soup, whatever you want to call it type of thing. So really it's just all of the leftover meat stuff that we have, you know, we throw into our freezer. So we use a lot of um, whole chickens to do like shredded chicken type stuff or whatever type of meal, type of meal it is. But we use those whole chickens then there's always so much waste if you just throw that carcass away, depending on how good you were picking it. So, here you go. I got chicken carcasses, I even have a turkey carcass in here. Um, whatever it is, if you have, you know, if you're okay with using like leg bones from a deer that you shot or a rabbit carcass or whatever, essentially any of the carcass stuff that you have, it's the leftovers um, from, you know, butchering, you know, whatever, Bag it up, throw it in your freezer when you have enough. You can boil it down and then you can can it, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to boil this essentially for almost, you know, essentially 36 hours of just boiling this down. Really get it down because what that'll do is break down all those little sinewy parts and the tendons and the cartilage and all that stuff, the skin, break it all down. I can then take this, pick out the bones, and even like a lot of those really small bones will able to just pulverize, you know, in the process here, it'll just be mush, which is good, because then you get that you know, content from that bone that will be able to stay in there and the dogs can eat and won't hurt them. Um, like eating an actual regular chicken bone might. So, I'm gonna fill these up with water, and I'm gonna put them on, and heat to start heating them up. Everything will finish falling out. And I'll let this thing sit until sometime tomorrow. I'll turn it off tonight when I go to bed, um, but it'll still be nice and hot when I get up in the morning. And I'll turn it back on, just continue to let it simmer down until sometime tomorrow, at which point I'll pull it off the, off the fire and take it in to the house. I have my big tubs that I use, that you see me use if you've been paying attention, if you've been following along. Um, and when I'm doing my grinding, I'll pick, all the, I'll drain all, this, all the stock out. I'm gonna save the stock. And then I'll pick all the, the non-edible parts out, all the bones and any other pieces that could be harmful for, for the dogs. I'll pick all of that out and I'll put it in um, the other bucket. Once that's all done, I will put everything back into these pots. Um, I'll even them out uh, between the two pots. And then I'll add a whole bunch of uh, vegetables, you know, it's like peas and carrots and green beans and stuff. Stuff that's healthy for dogs. I'll mix all of that in here. And then from there, once it's I've you know, boiled that down a little bit more to kind of reconstitute everything. It doesn't take long because I'm going to can it. Um, then I'll pour it into my, my pint jars. I'll do half a pint of this with a half a pint of water on top of that. And that's perfect for um, you know, one pint per dog at that point. And I'm able to make, between these two pots, I'm able to make 40 pints, which is 40 days worth of dog food. So, well, I'm sorry, this is like, 40 pints you know, on its own, and I'll be able to make um, 80 pints with the half and half mix, which is too much of dog food. So, sorry about that. Hey, Ray, I better get busy. We'll come back here and see you, and we'll do a progress update here later today, tomorrow. All right, welcome back. It is a couple of days later, actually, not a day later. Um, let this uh, sit on the, on the, uh, stove there for uh, half a day, two half day-ishes, so probably got a good 12 to 18 hours of just sitting simmering. And uh, so 
got it down, cooled down now here this morning and now it's time to kind of go through the painstaking process here so got to pick this get all the bones and stuff out and any other the unedible pieces and then get it into uh, our pint jars to start canning it so the nice thing is like i said on my start is like taking the time to like really block off some time to let it simmer for a long time. We're not talking just like a couple hours or so. We're talking like 12, 18 hours. It really breaks everything down because that's really what I really want because I'm not making this into soup for us to eat. This is for the dogs. And I want to get all that cartilage and all that sinew and tendon and all that stuff just you know, boiled down into essentially mush or liquid. Um, and then the meat obviously and the skin in there. But So that's all that's left is the unedible pieces like you know, a little chicken leg bone. So when picking through this, it actually becomes very easy um, than what it would normally be like if you were making stock or soup or something like that. So um, you'll find, like I said before, a lot of these pieces, like here's a, like a piece here, that, I mean, it just, a piece of bone, it just pulverizes. So what I'll do is when I find those pieces, I'll just smush them with my fingers, um, leave that in there, because that's just good nutrients for the dogs. So, Pick through all this. Um, this will take me a little while because I got um, the first um, pot here, and then I've still got a yeah, here's a leg bone that is just mushing to nothing. So and that's perfectly okay to give to the dogs. So got all that marrow and all that good stuff in there. Yeah, that's really healthy for them. And you know, our dogs, like everybody, always compliments our dogs with their coats and how healthy they are. So. Hey, they're like our kids, might as well spoil them a little bit, right? Take good care of them. So, I'm going to sit here and do this for a little while, and then we'll, uh, I'll come back to get with you guys later when time to start putting all this stuff into the jars. So I got that all strained out and uh, picked all the bones out. Just make sure, like I said, with the bones, like if you're going to keep any of that stuff in there, mush it. If it's not mushing between your fingers, it doesn't go into the, uh, to the food. So take that out. So if it mushes up, and, and uh, then you're good. Other than that, get it out of there because you don't want to take a chance of hurting your dog. So next thing we do is that we get some vegetables. So I'm just going to mix a bunch of vegetables in this tub and then I'll divide between the two pots um, after the fact. So I got some peas. Got the peas in there. Wife just got back with uh, some more peas and some carrots. So we got the green beans. So I'm just breaking these green beans up into smaller pieces to go in here. Um, and we're gonna put some tomato paste in here because supposedly it helps with reducing down their uh, you know, the burning capabilities of their pee on the lawn. I don't know if it actually works or not, but I figure it's not gonna hurt them. So we're gonna get all this stuff mixed in here and then we'll get it into the pots. Someone's excited about her dog food that's being made. You have to wait till tonight, little dog. Have a green bean. <laughs> Okay, well, we got it all out, back out here to my disaster of a garage. I got a backyard project and a shed project going on right now that, uh, yeah, we're running out of space in here. I'll be glad when that project's done. Anyway, I'm gonna um, just bring this to a boil just to get it warm and then turn it off because I need this when you're in the canning process, you need this to be warm, you know, hot to go into your, it's a hot pack essentially going into your jars when you put the lids on. So I'll put my lids and rings on and then they'll go into the canner and I'll show you that process here in a little bit. But uh, So I'm just gonna bring these to a quick boil, turn them off and then start filling jars. And then from there the jars will go into the canner and we'll go through, that's a tedious process because for this I'll need, with pint jars, I'll need, I can do 14 at a time in the canner and that's uh, an hour and 15 minutes per. And then with the heat up and the cool down, um, for that, we're looking at close to two hours per batch, and I've got about 60 pint jars to do. So it's going to be a long day. <laughs> so, like, like I said at the beginning, this is a commitment. This is a weekend-long project to do this, um, but I'm going to get two months of food for my dogs from one weekend's worth of work. And I'm not in the, in the amount of food that's not being wasted in the process is pretty significant. So. Uh, we try not to waste a lot of food. We compost all of our compostables, and then in this case, well, these is all the, this is all the non-compostable type stuff, and it's all perfectly healthy for the dogs. 
and you know they deserve it. So let me get busy here. All right, I'll go through the tediousness of filling all my jars half full with all the bulk of the uh, you know, the, the thick stuff and the meaty stuff and whatnot. So use a slide spoon and then through and scoop as much of that out, spread it out evenly between all my jars. Now I'm going to go through with the, with the liquid and uh, fill those jars all the way up. So I'll fill them up to the, just below, you know just below the neck and then uh, put them in the can. This is a tedious process going through here, so just be prepared for that. So we'll get this finished up, and then we'll be ready to can. All right, we got the first batch out of the canner here. So if you're not familiar with canning, I mean, all this does is bring it up to it's a pressure canner, it brings it up to 240 degrees, kills all the bad stuff, and you can keep this for up for a couple of years, and it'd be perfectly fine. This will be going about two months, so so. <clears throat> Same way you would make soup. That's essentially what I'm making. So, it takes a while, but pull this out. So we fill these all up. I got them all set up here, ready to go. Little hot packs, and uh, we'll pull this out. Let these cool down, and then we can put them away. But these will cool down, and then you get the um, the lids will pop down, just like we like, on a on a you know like a bottle of something that you buy at the store it's got a little it's, you push here if it's popped up and it's bad same thing happens with this so it's all the the pressure the steam and everything will suction that down and seal it so get all the air out of there and these things are still boiling you can see that right there see that boiling so, yep get all the air out of there and will be all set. So there you have it. This is definitely an all day thing. I really need to get another canner because I would make this twice as fast if I have. I got two burners on this. This is one of those Camp Chef Explorer two burner on camp stoves. So if I can do 16 pint jars, which are you know, at a time here in, in this canner, if I got another one, I could be doing 32. Yep, I'm gonna keep working away at this. All right, folks. Well, we're finally done here with this uh, dog food making project. So, a couple days, two, three days. I mean, I ended up taking a couple extra days. Well, three days really to get this done, um, just because I was doing some other things at the same time. Because yeah, it is a time of process. So, I mean, if you can just dedicate two days to you know doing this, you know, one day of just letting it, which is the easy part, just letting it uh, boil down. Um, for an all day, it's get in the morning, start the uh, the pots on the stove, and let it just uh, you know simmer down um, all day, and then you know pick it that night. Which really, I mean, with the way I do it, there's as I, as you saw, there's not a whole lot of picking because everything just you know, disintegrates, and you end up with just like mush, really, because um, it's just all shredded meat, and then all the cartilage is gone, all the fat is gone. It's not gone; it's just been. Um, turning the liquid and then a lot of the small bones, most of the bones are in the, you know, are just mush. So um, the picking process is pretty easy and then you can come back the next day, heat everything up and um, you know, start the can process. That's the part that's really the longest part because you know, you're looking at a couple hours per batch. So I've got two months worth of food here, but I'm doing 18 jars at a time. So it's like three, four batches. Um, at, you know that I'm doing throughout the day. So when you do the math, you know two times four. I mean, end up turning into an all-day process. So you got to fill the jars and all the stuff. So it just takes a while, um, but in the, in the end, it's worth it because dogs are just so much better off for it. And then I'm not wasting as much food. So um, whether it be chickens or wild game or turkey or whatever, you know, you know your store-bought you know chicken and turkey or whatever it is. If you're safe, you know, just save, take the time to save all of the that carcass and boil it all down, make the stock, put the meat back, you know, all the meat that comes off of that, all the stuff that you would normally just throw in the trash can is now going back into something that could be used. So it's truly using the whole animal and you can use organ meat and different things as well, the stuff that you're not gonna eat. You can save all of those things and use it in this process. And trust me, your animals will be much better off for it. So. The end goal being trying one take better care of my dogs because they deserve it, and two 
just li uh, limit the amount of waste that goes into our food system, um, in, at least in the American diet. So just better off for it, I think. So hopefully you guys, I know this is a little bit kind of like a, you know, different than our normal field the table type stuff, but I, you know, we thought this was important enough to share, um, you know, with you all and hopefully you learn something out of it. Maybe it'll, you know, encourage you to, um, you know, provide some, some better, uh, options for your, for your animals. So at any rate, we appreciate you guys following along and, uh, come back and see us again. Make sure you reach down and hit that subscribe button, share our channel with friends and family and everybody else under the sun and help us out. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We even started doing TikTok, amazingly enough. But uh, come back and see us again. We appreciate it. See you next time.